happiness is beautiful. It's a kind of reality. Happiness is the highest good. Happiness is free. So let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega. I'm here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the first of three classic happiness increase experiments. And um, this is a very important show because this show and the, the next two that I'll be doing on happiness increase will pretty much set the stage for, for the shows to come. Basically, the premise is that through direct training, that has been proven very effective in um, in actual um, studies uh, conducted by psychologists, we really can fairly easily and fairly quickly um, raise our level of happiness. So, um, okay, the first uh, happiness increase study was conducted in 1977 by um, a Dr. Fordyce, and there was um, then the second one came in 1980, and that was conducted by a New Zealand team of psychologists named Leichter, Hay, and Kamen. And then the third um, series of happiness studies was conducted in 1983, again by Dr. Fordyce. Um, just a brief inter introduction to um, Michael Fordyce. He's a, a college a professor in Florida. He's one of the top happiness researchers in the world. He's, he's developed actually what's known as the Fordyce Emotions Index, which measures one's level of happiness, and it's, uh, it's used wise, widely in the field. And he's also on the editorial board of the first professional journal um, devoted to, ha to happiness. It's called the Journal of Happiness Studies, and it was founded just several years ago. So he's on the ed editorial board of that magazine. Okay, his first, his first study um, was called The Development of a Program to Increase Personal Happiness, and it appeared in the Journal of Counseling Psychology, Volume 24, Number 6, in 1977. And basically, it was a self-study program that was separated into three individual experiments. Um, the theory was that um, if college students could be taught um, to adopt the behaviors and attitudes of people who were very happy, then they, too, could become very happy. Um, the reason it was done with college students is because, in general, um, I think at least about 80% of, of um, studies, um, psychological studies at least, are done with college students because they're just readily available to the um, to the researchers. Okay, so um, but th those um, those findings should um, generally do apply to um, the population in general. Okay, so the first um, the first experiment. Um, uh, developed three specific um, pilot programs to increase happiness. Uh, the first was an insight program, then the second was a fundamentals program, and the, th the third was an activities program. And then there was a control group, uh, which was, you know, a, a control group in studies is uh, to determine the effectiveness of, of the groups that, um, that actually are supposed to um, create an effect. Um, so let me explain those in a bit more detail. Um, uh, students in the Insight program were basically instructed to read specific chapters from Dr. Fordyce's book on, on happiness. And then they were um, instructed to develop a list of activities and, uh, and habits to adopt based on what they read. And so they were um, advised to, um, to practice three of those activities or habits each day. Um, then the second program that was developed um, gave actual specific information on how to become happier, and it was much more detailed than the Insight program. It started basically with, with nine fundamentals, and, and these fundamentals were actually based on, on the findings of psychologists who had been studying happiness for about 17 years before, so it's the cumulative findings of, of all the research on happiness. 
um, the first thing that they were instructed to do was to socialize more. Um, psychologists have discovered that, um, that the, the, the thing in life that brings happiness to most of us the most is other people. So they found that very happy people generally socialize a lot more than uh, people who are less happy. Um, and along with that, the second fundamental that they were instructed to work on was to develop a more extroverted, pers a, a more outgoing personality, you know, to, um, to really be more comfortable with people and to feel more comfortable with people. And that actually is, is, um, goes along with what has been discovered as, um, as the four personality characteristics that are most conducive to happiness or more, most correlated with happiness. And um, one of them is extroversion, the other is self-esteem, and um, the other is, one of them is like focus, of level of control, in other, words, in other words, how much control one has in, um, in one's life. And um, so anyway, um, developing, developing a, a more outgoing personality was um, something they were taught to work on. Something else that they were taught to work on is, is to become more active. Um, basically to, um, you know, they found that people who are much happier are generally more active people. They, um, they do a lot more. They, you know, they, they make more plans. They just, they just um, spend a lot more of their day actually doing something rather than being passive. Um, um, okay. Um, then the, uh, the fourth fundamental that they were taught to work on was to lower their expectations and aspirations. And this, this really has to do um, with, well, it, it's actually been taught um, in, in the East. It's one of their principal philosophies. It has to do with desires. In the East, um, you know, as far back as Buddha and, um, you know, centuries ago, um, the individuals, um, societies were taught to just minimize one's desires. And so, yeah, when we don't have very many expectations of ourselves, of life, of, of situations, when, when we minimize what we actually require or need or want from life, then we make it much easier to, um, to achieve what's most important to us in life, um, happiness. So, um, okay, then the fifth fundamental that they were instructed to work on was to become more optimistic and, and positive. Um, optimism is the fourth of the, the personality traits that are most conducive to happiness. Um, actually, Dr. Seligman, who I referred to on the last program, um, earned a lot of his um, recognition in the field by a book called Learned Optimis Optimism that uh, appeared back in the 80s, I believe. And optimism is about, you know, it's about um, seeing the, the good in life, seeing... Um, you know, we, we have an option. When, when we, when we um, view what's going on around us, we can, we can, you know, see what's good about it or we can, like, focus on the problems and on what's not right with it and all. So that um, research has found that those of us who really kind of, like, um, minimize or just um, have kind of, like, developed the habit of just, you know, overlooking um, the, what, what isn't perfect, what isn't as good as it could be, are generally much happier than, than those of us who really um, consider those things very important. Okay, um, the sixth fundamental they were advised to work on is to become better organized um, and to make plans. They found that happy people just, um, they, they spend more time um, organizing their lives, organizing their schedules, um, organizing their time and I think a, a part of that is, is really organizing their social time you know um, happy very happy people don't wait until the last minute to figure out what they're going to do for the weekend for example they, they might know that a few few days in advance uh, they might plan out their vac vacations very carefully to uh, you know because they know that the better they plan the um, the the better they can the the better they can expect that the um, the times that they plan will go um, much better. So um, so that that was that's very important to um, to increasing happiness. The seventh fundamental that he went through um, was to basically to overcome negativity and worrying. And um, you know overcoming neg negativity is very similar to um, you know becoming more optimistic and positive, but the essential aspect of this fundamental is to not worry. Um, fear is one of the three 
basic unpleasant emotions that confront us, the other two being sadness and anger. And fear is really, you know, it's it's like it's really um a form of anxiety. It's it's um often um when things when we have um lives that are very, very rewarding and satisfying and things are going well, often um we uh, we tend to not enjoy our lives as much as we could because we um, somehow adopted uh, or uh, or developed um, the habit of worrying about what might happen. So so generally the research has found that those of us who have learned to overcome worrying, to not worry about what might happen, are, are generally much happier than those of us who worry. And uh, for example, one one thing that they discovered is that. Um, about 90%, over 90% of what we tend to worry about never happens. So just from a logical standpoint, it really makes sense um, for us really not not to worry. Um, the eighth fundamental that was presented, uh, the subjects were instructed to live in the present. Um, very often we we say to ourselves, well, when I graduate school or when I get married or when I get this job or when I reach a certain plateau or level in my career or when I retire or when I make money, always in the, in the future. When, when something happens in the future, then I'll be very happy. And the reality is that happiness is available, um, great happiness is available to us in the present. It's not something that we have to wait for um, at, at any amount of time. You know, it really is very available to us in the present and, and happy people understand that. Happiness, happy people understand that, that um, happiness is for now, it's not for the future. Okay, and um, the last of the nine fundamentals, I think, is probably the most important. Um, the subjects were instructed to value happiness. Um, if one doesn't value happiness very much, one just won't be motivated to think about it or to plan one's life around achieving a great level of it. They found um, some societies put more of a premium on happiness than others. Um, our society, I think, tends to value happy, happiness um, um, much compared to other societies. I think we could value it much more because, uh, you know, as, as I went through um, last show on, on why I did this show, you know, our level of happiness as a country really isn't all that high. You know, we, we score about a, a D on our level of happiness. So, so valuing happiness really is important because it does set the stage for anything that we would do to enhance our level of happiness. Okay, so so the subjects in in this um, in this pilot program were basically given very detailed instructions on how to accomplish each of those nine fundamentals, and again they were instructed to work on one of on three of them um, every day. Okay, and then the um, the third pilot program was an activities program and in this program the, the subjects weren't given any instruction about happiness. Basically they were asked to rely on their own intuition uh, about what they enjoy doing, what, what makes them happy, what they feel makes them happy. So they developed a list of activities and um, basically the theory around that is that when you do more of what makes you happy you will indeed become happier. And then, of course, the control group was actually given false instructions. They, they were given instructions um, that just weren't designed to make them happy, that perhaps sounded good or something, but just uh, weren't uh, scientifically proven or demonstrated to increase one's level of happiness. Um, okay, now basically all the groups were given the same expectations, and they weren't, expect they weren't told that doing these things would make you happier. Because uh, what happens in, in psychological experiments, there's something called um, demand characteristics, like, like the good subject effect. So sometimes the subject, in order to please the, the researcher, will report um, higher results. You know, will, will report results designed to please whoever is doing the, the experiment. So in this experiment, they were basically told that these instructions would, are just um, general instructions for living a healthy life. Okay, um, now all of, the, all of the subjects were measured both before and after the experiment. And um, now this is important. Um, happiness measures, uh, different kinds of um, guides to measuring happiness have been experimented with for about four, four decades. 
and they um, they're very reliable actually they, they've been tested and retested and um, the way they do that is like first they'll ask a person how happy they believe they are and then to uh, verify the results they'll ask others around them how happy they, they think that the person is and then lastly they'll conduct extensive um, psychological tests with um, numerous questions and, and considerations to really verify the results of the first two methods so so they were tested both before and after and again these, these measures are, are highly reliable okay well um, the results were that after after two weeks um, all of the three groups the um, the insight activities and fundamental groups all experienced significant increases in happiness and the control group did not now out of the three groups the fundamentals group group the one that I went through in, in more detail and listed each of the fundamentals they improved the most they increased their happiness the most then followed by the activities group and the insight group where they actually read from a book on happiness they, they achieved the, the least happiness increase, but they never, nevertheless did increase their happiness in that way. Okay, then um, the, the experiment lasted for two weeks, but then um, students were given the choice, an option of on their own continuing with, the, with the, the program. So some students chose to do that, and after two months, um, the students who, who uh, continued working on happiness felt that um, that after that time, the, the changes that they, were, that they were working on had been incorporated into their personality, and that they didn't feel that they had to like be conscious of like you know socializing more and being more optimistic. They found that within those two months, they it had become a part of their ordinary um, general habit or pattern of thinking, and and they also, as a group, felt optimistic about um, maintaining the gains that they'd made throughout the um, throughout the test. Okay, so now this, this first experiment, again, was comprised of three separate experiments. So, um, so in the second experiment, um, what Dr. Fordyce chose to do was to develop and improve the most successful of the first three pilot programs, the Fundamentals program. And what he did is he added, um, he added more Fundamentals to, to, um, to make the total um, 14. And he also expanded the the time of training from two weeks to six weeks. Okay, so in addition to the nine that I um, went through before, he advised the the subjects to develop their closest relationships. Now, one of the things that has been found in happiness research is that um, the primary source of happiness for most of us is our significant other. You know, a husband, wife boyfriend girlfriend our our, um, our children you know, our closest friends so naturally it would make sense to to really um work on those relationships to to um to consider them very important because they, they're extremely important to our happiness um fundamental number 11 um advised the subjects to to be a better friend because apparently um it naturally goes along with with um developing one's closest relationships um it's not just the very significant others it's our circle of friends that are, that are very important to our um, happiness so that um, so it's been determined that you know generally by being a good friend by by knowing how to be a good friend um, you know one's going to increase one's um, one's experience of pleasure when one's socializing with friends um, they were also um, the fundamental number 12 that they're instructed to work on was to do more meaningful work. What happens is a lot of times in our life, we are um, we need to do work that, for example, for our jobs or um, for our families that that has to get done. So we do it, but it, a lot of times um, it's not the kind of work we we really want to do. You know, it, it um, or perhaps a lot of times um, we don't we don't give it the kind of meaning that, that we could in order to, uh, to um, enjoy it as much as we can. So basically the subjects were, um, were instructed to seek out what, what really is important to them, you know, what, what kind of work they really find has, has great purpose and, and to devote more time to, to that kind of work. Now Fundamental 13 basically divided uh, a previous fundamental negative uh, to reduce negative feelings and worry into 
two separate skills. Okay, um, so yeah, that, that's pretty um, that's pretty straightforward. And then the last um, fundamental that was added was to develop generally a, a healthier personality overall. They found that that um, that while happiness is really available for all of us, regardless of our basic overall health, emotional health, um, personality, um, those of us with the healthiest person personalities have the easiest time um, finding great happiness. Um, okay, um, now this second experiment basically confirmed the results of the first one. Um, it was successful. Uh, in fact, 90, 97% of all the students who went through the experiment um, basically related it as a success. Um, okay, and then, um, then, then he conducted a third experiment, and um, this third experiment was actually the same as the second experiment, except the students were instructed to um, do the, the work independently. There, there was no classroom, there was no structured, organized um, training. And what they found through this experiment was, um, I think it makes a lot of sense, the students who devoted the most time to um, increasing their level of happiness had the greatest results. Okay, um, so now I'm going to be talking, there's, there's two more classic um, happiness increase experiments, and I will be um, doing shows on them in, in the near future. Um, the one by the New Zealand psychologist and then the second one by Dr. Fordyce. Now, in this, in this um, segment, I chose not to focus too much on, on the, um, the level of increase in happiness, basically, um, but I will, I will um, deal with that more so um, during the next show. Um, okay, now, what I'd like to do before we close tonight is um, I'd like to go into our strategies and considerations segment and just basically... Um, go through some specific practical guidelines that we can use to really um, you know, increase our level, level of happiness quite, quite easily and quickly. Okay, um, I think um, our last, last, last week we dealt with valuing happiness. You know, if, if we value happiness, then we'll consider it important enough to work on. So, uh, so the, second, um, the second strategy I think we should, um, we should consider is um, to really work on happiness directly. Um, a lot of times in life, you know, we'll develop ha hobbies. You know, we'll want to, like, learn how to play tennis or, or even, you know, go to the movies, um, learn a language, um, garden. We, we have things that we do, and these things that we do generally do um, create happiness for us. You know, we, we do them because they make us happier, happier. But um, what happens is, like, a lot of times, like, for example, with exercise, when, when we choose to exercise, it's like we're doing something that hopefully we'll enjoy, but will give us greater gains in the future. It's like an investment in greater, well, in, in the case of exercise, of physical health. So we should really apply that principle to our happiness and work on our happiness directly. Uh, there are several books written by psychologists that, that give um, advice on this based on, um, on the research that, that's been done. Uh, the most recent is by Dr. Seligman. It's called Authentic Happiness, and it was um, published this year, actually. And it, it gives a lot of advice on, on how we could um, achieve, achieve greater happiness. But, but in general, um, you know, if, if we include, if, if we recognize how important happiness is, how, how it is really what we all want in life, um, and that's, you know, that's everyone, that's, uh, you know, they, they've asked people throughout decades, you know, what's most important to you? And, and inevitably, it's happiness. And so, of course, it is somewhat ironic that um, happiness is so important to us, but we don't learn it in school, and our government really doesn't vote time to it, and we don't really learn it directly uh, in our families. Um, so, so if we if we um, if we consider how important it is to our lives, then then we will work on it, and. Um, and that's, you know, I'll be going through, through the different strategies that we can um, adopt to do that. But again, there are books, and a lot of it is really just thinking about it. You know, just thinking what, what's making us happy, what, what will make us happy in the future, and what's making us unhappy, or, or making it more difficult for us to be as happy as we could. Um, 
So, okay, so yeah, um, working on our happiness directly instead of like just having it come as a byproduct of what we do, I think, is very important. Um, you know, it's probably one of the most important things we can do to, to raise our level of happiness. Okay, another, another thing I think we can do is that um, basically there are, there are six primary emotions. Um, happiness, surprise, disgust, fear, anger, and sadness. And these are primary because like everyone in the world experiences them. They're the six emotions that are universal. And, um, and of, the, of the six, the, the one of them basically is pleasant, happiness. And then there are three that are basically unpleasant. I mean, disgust and surprise could be pleasant. Well, disgust, I suppose, is unpleasant, but we don't experience it that often. And surprise could be pleasant and unpleasant. But, but fear, anger, and sadness are the three unpleasant emotions that we face you know, throughout our, our, our daily lives. And so that it makes a lot of sense to understand that, to understand that whenever we're dissatisfied, whenever we're not as happy as we could be or should be, that it's generally either fear, sadness, or anger that we're feeling. And so the idea is that um, the better we get at understanding what these are about, and I'll do shows on these because they are very important. Like, for example, um, anger. We become angry when we think there's been an, an injustice committed. And, you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter whether an injustice has actually been committed, but that's our perception. So we, we feel that we have to address that. Um, we feel fear when we think that there's, we're in danger, either our, our, our actual health or life is in danger, or something we hold of great value. So basically understanding these three um, basic negative emotions will, will help us to, to overcome them, and as we over, overcome them, they'll naturally be, you know, we'll naturally experience many more pleasant feelings. Okay, well, um, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. This is George Ortega saying, be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join me next Thursday at 9 p.m. here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful. It's our own learning. Happiness is why we live each day. Happiness is just a name. So let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy.